It's the worst news a mother could learn on Mother's Day that her daughter is murdered and now her grandson has to grow up without his mother. We spoke to the victim's mother on Saturday and at that point all we knew was that Patrice Wilson was kidnapped here outside of the DMC. She was a nurse here, just got off of working the overnight shift. And this is the man police suspect to be uh, connected not only to her kidnapping, but to her murder. Family tells us that this is her ex-boyfriend, 36-year-old Jameer Miller. It's suspected that Miller was wearing a blonde wind, was wearing a blonde wig when he forced Miller or Wilson into his car by gunpoint. Now, multiple sources confirm that Patrice's body was recovered in the trunk of her own car outside of an apartment complex in Novi. We're going to show you a picture of Jameer Miller once again. He is still at large at this point. If you see him, you are not to approach him because he is considered armed and dangerous. Instead, you are supposed to contact police immediately. Some things have come to light and apparently Miller is tied to another missing woman from back in 2011. It's just it's, it's freaky. When news spread last weekend that 36 year old Jameer Miller was wanted in connection to the kidnapping and murder of local nurse Patrice Wilson, it hit differently for this family. Her family still has so many questions. The biggest one, why has he not been found? Megan Wood spoke with them about what these nearly 36 hours have been like. Her son cannot hold her and say happy Mother's Day to her today. That bothers me. And Patrice's mom, Rosalind Livingston, wants it to bother you too, so much that you help them find Jameer Miller. Police consider him armed and dangerous. Rosalind says the two used to date. She dated him for a while, and she been trying to get away from him because she know he was toxic for her. I been told him. A mother, mother knows. She even shared with us this viral video of what's believed to be Jameer outside of Patrice's home in 2021. You breaking in my house, Jameer? Now, as a mother who had to see her daughter at the morgue today, she says, Yeah, I can't say the perpetrator name because you took the life out of her. And I've seen it today. She tries to think of happier times. She was even thinking about going back to school. And I was like, oh, what you gonna be an anesthesiologist nurse? You gonna be making that money, girl. But then it hits that she's gone. Patrice's grandmother, Pamela Golden, can't make sense of it. She knew what she wanted to do, how she wanted to do. She was a good girl. She didn't deserve this. She definitely didn't deserve this. Someone knows something. They're sure of it. I need the streets to talk. We need to find the person who killed Patrice so she can have some justice. Breaking news on a murder manhunt. Sources are telling us that the man wanted for kidnapping and killing a 29-year-old nurse has been captured. Good afternoon, Rhonda. We're up here on the west side. We just left uh, Patrice Wilson's uh, grandmother's home and mother's home where they are reacting with so much emotion after this awful roller coaster ride involving their loved one, Patrice Wilson. And they are confirming what we've been able to confirm through sources that the main suspect here, Jameer Miller, is now in custody. I just spoke to Patrice Wilson's grandmother who had this instant reaction about the news today. How did you find out, though? We got a call this morning saying that uh, they had picked him up, and we're so happy about that. Now we got to go forward. You know, it's still a lot of more questions that need to be asked. But we, we right now, we need to try to get her laid out. And my daughter's kind of really uh, upset right now. 
So Patrice Wilson's grandmother is saying, yes, we found out from Detroit police that Miller is in custody. So they're reacting to that at the same time, Rhonda, planning Wilson's funeral. Just an awful situation here. We're looking into details on how Miller was taken into custody. We're hearing that perhaps he turned himself in at some point this morning. We will get to that but right now, officially from DPD. We're waiting for a four o'clock news conference uh, from DPD. We'll have it covered for you, but we can confirm that Miller now is in custody. That manhunt is over. Some things have come to light and apparently Miller is tied to another missing woman from back in 2011. It's just, it's, it's freaky. When news spread last weekend that 36 year old Jameer Miller was wanted in connection to the kidnapping and murder of local nurse Patrice Wilson, it hit differently for this family. Jameer, the grandson, say, Ma, daddy on TV. They were sitting in the living room and he was watching TV and he was on the news. Jameer Miller Sr. is linked to a missing nursing student, 24-year-old Bianca Green, who went missing in 2011, last seen in Inkster. She was pregnant. Miller and Bianca had dated and have a child together, Jameer Jr. Here is Miller at a Crime Stoppers press conference back then holding their son. It's hard being a, a single father, and it's hard for, for me to even tell him what's going on. We ain't never give up hope, but we was trying to give Jameer the benefit of the doubt. But now, after 12 years, this family is questioning everything. After learning Miller was arrested in connection to Patrice's death, she was found shot to death in the trunk of her car in Novi after being kidnapped, leaving for work at Detroit Receiving Hospital Saturday. In Bianca's case, family always suspected foul play. You know she wouldn't have left Jameer Jr. She wouldn't have never left Jameer. That was her, like her Velcro. She wouldn't have never left her son. Miller has an extensive criminal history for gun and drug charges, assault, drunk driving, and running from police. He was questioned but never charged in Bianca's disappearance. Romulus police, who led that case, did not respond to our calls to see if the case will now be reexamined. What do you hope comes out of this now that Jameer's in custody? That we get some type of closure. Chief White very much aware of that case involving Bianca Green. He says they're now working with Romulus police, sharing notes, comparing investigations to now see if this changes anything from a case. This family has been desperately uh, looking for answers over the last 12 years. I can't imagine it wouldn't be reexamined at this point. Now involving the latest homicide that we were discussing earlier, uh, no charges against Miller at this point. We will continue to keep in touch with the prosecutor's office. Now we've learned the man in custody has connected to another case of a woman's disappearance more than a decade ago. Sean Lay is live with all these new developments. Sean. Startling new developments, Kimberly. Good evening to you. Jameer Miller, we're told, turned himself in yesterday, police say, in connection with that kidnapping over the weekend of nurse Patrice Wilson, as you mentioned, and she was later found murdered. Let's go back to 2011. Miller had a girlfriend at the time. Her name was Bianca Green. They have a child together. She went missing. Now we're told that case is being ripped wide open. The manhunt for 36-year-old Jameer Miller coming to an end Sunday afternoon when he surrendered to police. He's in custody as police continue to investigate the shocking events of this past Saturday. Miller's ex-girlfriend, a nurse named Patrice Wilson, was leaving her overnight shift at Detroit Receiving Hospital. Police say she was abducted, named Miller as the suspect, and Wilson's body was later found in the trunk of her vehicle parked in Novi. Now let's go back to March 25th of 2011. That's when the family of an expected mother named Bianca Green urged the public to help find her. She had gone missing from Romulus and has never been found. Green's family asking for help at a Crime Stoppers event at that time. And standing right there, Bianca Green's boyfriend at the time, Jameer Miller, the same man police say abducted Patrice Wilson Saturday morning. Detroit Police James White says the missing case of Bianca Green and if Miller is involved in her disappearance is now a new and wide open investigation. I was made aware of that uh, as a part of this investigation and everything is going to be looked at, including uh, anything uh, from that case as well. I don't know the status of that case. I know our detectives are in contact uh, with the agency of origin uh, on that particular missing persons. Uh, we're going to cooperate with them, uh, pull their files, and uh, we'll be working together to see if there's any correlation or if, if there's anything we can help them with. 
back here live. Here's the latest. Miller, with his attorney, turned himself in yesterday to the Detroit Correction Facility. He's being held there tonight. Kimberly waiting tomorrow to see if charges will be filed in the nurse case of Patrice Wilson. And then re-examining this old case from 2011, Green's family hoping for new information. Uh, and again, police say they're just starting to scratch the surface of that one. Detroit police comparing notes with Romulus. Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here today. Uh, I want to start by offering my condolences to the family and friends of Patrice Wilson. Uh, it's a tragedy that someone like Ms. Wilson would be taken away from this world so young and so tragically in this horrific way. She was young and she had her whole life ahead of her. She was dedicated to serving and helping others as a nurse and putting others before herself. Ms. Wilson has been described as cherished by her family and her friends uh, and as well as her coworkers. She's also a mother, obviously. She's a daughter. Uh, and for her to have her life taking, taken away from her uh, just before Mother's Day is absolutely heartbreaking. Uh, as I begin, I want to stress that this is an active investigation. Uh, the information is preliminary. We will share with you the facts as we know them as of right now, as of today. Uh, but there are some uh, aspects of the investigation that I will not be able uh, to get into. Again, I know the public has many questions. Uh, and I cannot get into all of the details. Uh, I cannot jeopardize this investigation. As I indicated, it is an active investigation. Here are the facts as we know them thus far. On Saturday, May 13th, at approximately 7.40 a.m. in the 4200 block of San Antoine, Ms. Wilson was kidnapped by a suspect identified as Jameer Miller. The suspect was wearing a wig uh, described as a blonde or red wig uh, trying to disguise his identity. Once notified, the Detroit Police Department acted immediately. The initial call came into the Wayne State University Police Department. We were notified due to the nature of the, the call of a kidnapping. Uh, we deployed our assets with the goal of finding our suspect and Ms. Wilson before the situation ended in the most uh, worst possible outcome. A number of units participated uh, in looking for uh, our victim as well as looking for our suspect as we identify who he was. Uh, they included our organized crime unit, our major crimes unit, our homicide division, uh, our commercial auto theft division, our future, fugitive apprehension team, and our special response team, uh, as well as our homicide task force and missing persons. I highlight those because I want the community to know that we activated all of these units with the efforts of identifying where she was located and identifying our suspect. Uh, our headquarters surveillance uh, unit was also engaged in attempting to uh, notify or to identify where our suspect was located. I also want to thank the Michigan State Police and the Wayne State Police Department as well as the Inkster Police Department. Uh, this is a very complex case, and as you can hear, uh, it, it touched a number of different communities, uh, and, and consequently, uh, we had uh, those uh, respective agencies involved uh, in attempting to identify. Uh, where she was. Uh, a number of search warrants were executed uh, in, in Inkster, Detroit. Uh, we also had the support of the Novi Police Department. Unfortunately, uh, yesterday at approximately 2.15, or strike that. Let me go back and pick up one last part. After several search warrants were executed, the suspect uh, feeling the pressure of this investigation uh, due to all of the search warrants, all of the activities by those agencies that I just identified, uh, the suspect uh, negotiated his surrender via his lawyer, uh, and he was taken into custody uh, at the DDC at 2.15 p.m. Uh, on yesterday, and that's the Detroit Detention Center. Again, this investigation is ongoing. Uh, we are currently finalizing our investigators' reports to submit to the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office for their review uh, and hopefully uh, their charges. Uh, I've said this before, and I cannot uh, stress it enough. Uh, domestic violence continues to be a problem in our community. Uh, we have resources. We have uh, domestic violence victim assistance uh, units in our agency, and they can be reached at 313-883-1660. Again, that's 313-883-1660. And they are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, it crosses all demographics. Uh, domestic violence is something uh, that continues to plague not only 
our city, but this country. Uh, we have seen a number of tragic events around the state uh, this weekend, um, even in uh, most recently a few days ago, uh, where the uh, health director, I believe, in Oakland County um, lost her life in a murder-suicide. So again, if you need those resources, uh, those resources are here for you. With that, I will take any questions. I can hear you okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, uh, they were in a, a previous dating relationship, and it is my understanding uh, they had uh, recently broken up. Yeah, I, I was made aware of that uh, as a part of this investigation, and everything is going to be looked at, including uh, anything uh, from that case as well. I don't know the status of that case. I know our detectives are in contact uh, with the agency of origin uh, on that particular missing persons. Uh, we're going to cooperate with them, uh, pull their files, and uh, we'll be working together to see if there's any correlation or if, there, if there's anything we can help them with with that missing person. Yeah, you know, I think it's it's such a complex issue for some, um, and there's a lot of a lot of different factors that impact reporting of domestic violence. Uh, some are economic, some are you know just so many different embarrassment and things such as that 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 lead people uh, to to be in these relationships. In this instance, she she appears to have done everything the right way. She got out of the relationship, uh, and unfortunately, uh, the tragic outcome was. Uh, his violence and his persistence uh, to keep her in that relationship. So in this instance, uh, this is someone who, who, who did what she could uh, to separate herself from that situation. Unfortunately, though, um, you know, these types of offenders uh, don't take no for an answer and more needs to be done to protect our victims. Uh, there's PPOs and things such as that, but we certainly like to see a lot more being done before someone else has to lose their life. Um, very tragic event, and, and like I said, you know, with these resources that are available, um, there are some things that can be done, such as relocation and things like that. Uh, but I, I think that, you know, if, if nothing else, uh, this really shines a light on just how these last few re weeks, uh, just recently, uh, the, the young lady who was shot and killed uh, in Southfield, and then the, the, the suspect who engaged the Southfield police. You know, that was a domestic situation. And then I've already spoken about the one that happened in Oakland County, and now here we are with ours in Detroit, and there's been a number of them. Already this year, we've had 12 homicides with a domestic violence nexus to them, uh, and, and that's just unfortunate. We're pretty much at the same place we were last year with 12. But that's 12 victims this year alone that have lost their life uh, at the hands of someone at some point who they thought cared for them and they cared for. So this is a real serious issue. Jessica Dupnack, Fox 2. Uh, kind of going off of that, was there any specific instances prior to this of stalking or harassment at all? That yeah, we're, we're unpacking all of that now. I know um, just over this weekend looking at his criminal history, um, he's a very violent person. Uh, he has a, a significant criminal history. Uh, and there is a history of domestic violence associated with that as well. You guys knew pretty quickly who you were looking for. Was it video assets or was there something that, that triggered that? We got the best police department in the United States of America. I mean, I know I say it a lot, but these detectives, you know, they don't work eight to four, nine to five. It's not an eight hour shift for them. When, when a member of our community, a young lady loses her life or a young man, but this young lady, you know, these officers and these investigators look at this as, you know, that could be my child, it could be my sister. Uh, beautiful young lady working, doing everything right, you know, a couple days before Mother's Day, 
um, a nurse, young nurse. Uh, so they were just passionate about, you know, getting this, this person off the street quickly. Um, they were able to, you know, do some, some really good detective work, uh, identify who they were looking for pretty quickly, uh, connect some dots, and, you know, do a number of things from search warrants to social media workups to pretty much know uh, who she was associated with and what she was going through. And uh, that led us to our suspect and, and where we are today. Chief, um, Andrea again with the Detroit Free Press. I just have additional, one more additional question. Um, there are already details out there um, relating to how her body was found. Um, there is reports that she was found in her, the trunk of her SUV or a SUV um, outside of her apartment in Novi. Um, is there anything that you can say about those details? Yeah. You know, that, that it's really frustrating. I, I, I appreciate, you know, some people that have information that's in the know, mm -hmm. sharing with the media. We're going to always be transparent and mm -hmm. share, but when we get that granular with the details, mm -hmm. we compromise the case, right? Mm -hmm. There's certain things that only the perpetrator knows. And when I hear this type of stuff, it's just so frustrating. I wish I knew who told you that so I could make sure that they're not in the know of information that could compromise mm -hmm. the case and bring some closure to this family. But since you've asked the question, uh, she was found inside the car, and that's, that's as far as I'm going to go with that. Um, but if that's already out there, that's really unfortunate. And I'd really like to know if you'd like to share where you got that. I'd appreciate I, it. I didn't get that information. Other news outlets had obtained oh, okay. that information. Well, I'm going to find yeah. out uh, because yeah. that's, that's mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the, the, again, that level of detail, I mean, I don't know how that helps us, you know, with the media even. I mean, mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is she was viciously murdered. Um, you know, someone's lost their child. The D Detroit has lost another daughter. And, and we, we did everything we could to get this perpetrator off the street, uh, and she was found in her car uh, deceased. And we know and we're very confident uh, who did the act. Uh, the granular details, I'd like to withhold those uh, so that I can turn those over to the prosecutor. And the, as the detectives continue to do their work, he may say something that is very specific to this case that only he would know. Um, so I can't confirm that for you. I apologize. No, it's okay. understood. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, Brett, uh, very much.